Hey, Mr. Chairman. Jill, and thank you. Thanks for being here, and thanks for all you do for the country. Uh, y'all stay at it all day, every day. Uh, and there's a lot that goes on that most people don't know that y'all do. So uh, we appreciate the work. Uh, you, you also can appreciate our second guessing, looking over your shoulder all the time, as we all have accountability. But I want you to know we very much appreciate your work. Uh, Secretary Johnson, could you also pass on uh, my appreciation to Administrator Neffinger as well? Uh, he's had a very tough job and has made some serious transitions within TSA, both in personnel and in process. I know a lot of that is still in process, uh, but can you pass on from our committee and from me uh, that, that appreciation as well for the hard work that he's taken on there as well? Uh, I know with my state as well, just on a purely parochial statement, uh, we've had conversations before about real ID and some uniqueness uh, in Oklahoma because we have a private system uh, for uh, issuing driver's licenses. And uh, so it's been an ongoing process to be able to help try to figure out a way to be able to fulfill that because of our unique system. Uh, Oklahoma is a little bit different uh, in some states that uh, people typically don't mind go to get a driver's license because it's a private entity that does it. And it usually takes about five minutes. Uh, that's not true in a lot of other states, and we're, we're trying to not lose that part uh, while we're still working through the real ID process. So I appreciate the flexibility that's been there. Um, I, I want to talk uh, briefly on several issues here as well. One is the growth of homegrown violent extremism. Uh, this is one of those threats that's incredibly difficult to be able to track, uh, but it's trending the wrong direction and trying to f figure out both the inspiration side and tracking how people are inspiring those to the United States and how we move as uh, Mr. Comey, you've mentioned often the flash to bang, that time period getting very, very close together. So what do you see currently nationally on homegrown violent extremism and the trends? We continue to work cases trying to assess where someone is on the consuming to acting spectrum, which, as you said, is often very short and unpredictable. Right, and, no, and it's not illegal to be able to look at Anwar al sermons, for instance. But suddenly, those that are looking at it then turn violent fairly extreme, fairly quickly, but not all of the people that do. Right. It's even protected speech to, to say, I'm a fan of the Islamic State, so-called. And so our challenge is to figure out where people are there. Uh, we still have about 1,000 open investigations on that. The, the, if there's any good news, and I don't want to squeeze it too hard for good news, is that the rate of increase has slowed a little in recent months. Now. My hope is that it's going to follow the same trajectory as the traveler numbers and head downward, but it hasn't headed downward yet. We're still opening and closing, and it's ticking up slightly. So we have thousands of foreign fighters that have traveled to Syria and Iraq to fight with the Islamic State that have returned back to Europe. Uh, we have a limited number. What's our number that we think uh, have, have tried to travel to fight with the Islamic State, or at least to travel to that region from the United States? With us, with the Islamic State, it's in the dozens okay. uh, number. So we're in the thousands, though, that have traveled to that region and have returned to Europe. How are we doing tracking those individuals not then traveling from Europe to the United States? Um, Senator, first of all, <clears throat> we've added a lot of security around the visa waiver program. Um, we get more information through the electronic system for travel authorization, which has actually been a productive exercise. We've denied ESTA travel, visa fee travel, to a lot of people as a result of the added security. Help, help me understand the, the phrase, a lot of people. G give me an example of what that might be. Um, I've seen the statistics. Um, in the first year, that we added questions to the electronic system for travel authorization. I think we denied, as a result of those additional questions, um, people, I believe, in the thousands. I can get you the exact number. Okay, it's a global helpful. number. The Congress last year passed mm -hmm. additional security, which has also limited the ability to travel here visa-free. Congress gave me the authority to add countries to the list for which if you visited them, you cannot come here visa-free. And I took advantage of that. So we've added security there. More broadly, however, I think it's incumbent on us to continue to work with the EU, with European nations, on sharing of API and PNR data, uh, more federal air marshal agreements, and more pre-clearance. More pre-clearance, forward deployed. You know, we, we had the football analogy earlier where we're defending on the one-yard line. I want to defend on the 50-yard line. Right. So pre-clearance is an opportunity to screen people on the front end of their travel to the United States. Uh, we've had a number of foreign airports indicating an interest in building that with us, and it's a priority of mine, and we're going to keep at it. Okay. Let, let me bring in several topics here as we try to blitz through this. 
Um, Secretary Johnson, the, the, this is an internal issue, but it's one of the things that I'm also concerned about and that we have clear oversight on, and one is dealing with the HR. Uh, when DHS was formed, you had all these different HR systems. Uh, as I recall, the number uh, in 2011 was still reaching about 442 or somewhere through there. Uh, total different independent systems still within uh, DHS dealing with HR. Mm. Uh, 2011 came, DHS set a standard, so there's 15 main areas and 77 projects that we want to be able to accomplish. Uh, GAO came out and said at the end of 2015, of those 15 projects named in 2011, only one of them has been accomplished, of the areas. And of the 77 projects within that, uh, I believe it's two or three have been completed. Uh, and so what I'm trying to figure out is, look, give me, that was at the end of 2015, at the end of 2016, where do you think we're going to be? And in, in trying to compile these different HR systems so we can have a more efficient inner structure. Uh, it's, a, it's a good question. As part of my unity of effort initiative, we've been looking to streamline the HR process and reduce the number of these systems. I'd have to get you the exact number. I do know that GAO has been very complimentary of us in addressing all of the high-risk items on their high-risk list, and we hope to get off that list uh, at some point in the not-too-distant future. But I can, I can get you okay, the precise that, numbers. That, that'd be helpful to know. Just trying to be able to track the process internally there. Of the 148,000 older fingerprints cards that Senator Sass had mentioned before, where are we as far as getting those digitized? Nine it's, months. Okay. Nine, Nine months, months to be complete from now? Of all 148,000? Nine 148, months to be complete 000. from now. Okay. Uh, Mr. Comey, let me ask you about drug enforcement. And this is one of the areas I'm concerned about, FBI. They, you have so much on your plate. Uh, but obviously dealing with drug enforcement, specifically dealing with Central America, you have a very unique connection where it's both gang involvement and what's destabilizing Central America, much of it is coming from the United States, and the movement of drugs, again, destabilizing, so it's causing immigration issues and a lot of crime and, and, and grief on our street from families. Give me an update where you see the trends right now in the movement of drugs in the United States and the gang activity in the United States. I'll let them get away with it because we're down a couple members, so, but briefly. Uh, the two major trends to highlight, nearly all of the heroin coming into the United States and nearly all the methamphetamine uh, is being produced in Mexico now. And a wave of highly pure heroin has been washing from the East Coast towards the West and a wave of highly pure methamphetamine has been washing from West to East. Those waves are now overlapping. Those are Mexican trafficking organizations that are using gangs in the United States as their distributors, but the importers are the Mexican trafficking organizations. Those are the two most important macro trends at this point. Thanks, Senator Langford. 